Hello, hi everybody. Welcome to a sleepy Sunday. So you'll have to be gentle with me. I think we're all kind of feeling like that at the moment, I think. Uh, so we're gonna take it nice and easy today, but we're gonna make a really, really nice, yummy uh, lunch for us. Uh, so hello, hello, hello to Karen and Hope and Paul and Colleen and Mercedes. Um, welcome, welcome. Um, so yeah, we have shared the cook along ingredients yesterday, uh, but it was a bit late, it was a bit late, so if you haven't had time to get the ingredients, then I totally, totally understand. Uh, from next week, when we come back from the night, we will uh, give you guys a lot more notice with the cook along ingredients, uh, because we'll only be doing three a week, we will only be doing three live recipes a week, so it'll be much easier for us to get all the ingredients together, um, and yeah, give you guys enough notice so that you've just got a bit more time to go out and get something. So hello to Jeff, who's in the other room, and uh, Pascal, hello, Karen says hello to everybody, hello, hello, hello. Um, so, um, Colleen says, is this one mushroom, mate? I'm afraid it is, I'm afraid it is. And in fact, that's a really, really good cue for us to go over to our picture. Um, so, the reason why I created this recipe um, is because quite often, it, at least in the UK, I'm not sure about in other countries, but at least in the UK, um, you get sold a veggie burger only for it to arrive and it is a burger patty with a portobello mushroom in the middle of it. No burger, really, whatsoever. It's just the mushroom and that's it. And that is incredibly, incredibly um, annoying when you've been expecting like an actual burger. So I created this dish so that we have the burger patty on the inside and you know whatever bits and pieces that you want to add to it um you know whether it's you know lettuce or tomato or uh cucumber or mustard or uh gherkin which i love i love it but um so <laughs> so whatever bits and pieces you want to put inside it we put inside it and then we have the portobello mushroom as the burger bun okay so let's just like go back to the picture there we go. So we've got the burger bun is actually the portobello mushroom. And that's what's going to sit on the outside. Uh, I will be completely honest with you and tell you that that's a little bit tricky to eat like a regular burger. <laughs> surprise, surprise. You're going to get a bit messy with that. Um, if anybody wants to try it, please film it. I'd love to see that. I would absolutely love to see that. Uh, and so just a quick hello to Katie and Gloria and Lara. Thank you for joining us. Um, and so I would say that if you want this to be um, less mushroomy, then just uh, put it between two burger buns um, rather than the portobello uh, mushrooms that make up the, uh, the buns in the picture. So, you know, that's an easy swap. That's an easy swap for people who don't like mushrooms. But yes, it is an intensely mushroomy dish if you do use those portobello uh, mushrooms. And Paul quite rightly says, restaurant vegan burgers are expensive. They really can be. They really, really can be. And definitely in the UK, we've seen a lot of mainstream restaurants or non-vegan restaurants introducing uh, vegan dishes, which is great, which is really, really great, but charging quite a lot for them a lot for them. So in Horsham where I live there's a restaurant in town and they have started selling cauliflower steak and it's 12 quid. <laughs> 12 quid for a cauliflower steak. Like it's not even organic for a start. Like it's just ridiculous, ridiculous. I think that there's a place in Borough Market as well that is selling cauliflower steaks at a phenomenally expensive, expensive price. So, uh, uh, Colleen asked, uh, do you have Beyond Burgers or Impossible Burgers? So we do have Beyond Burgers. So they were released, I think first in the UK at um, a burger chain. Um, can't remember which burger chain it was actually, maybe you guys can remember. Um, and also they were released in Tesco as well. Um, so yes, we do have them. Um, I think people are a bit divided about them because they are incredibly meaty um, and they have that iron uh, smell, that meat smell, which is basically kind of like a blood smell, which is a bit weird, you know, like when, I mean, I've been vegan for 25 years, so, you know, I haven't had meat in all that time. And so the smell 
you know, it is so strong, it is really, really strong. Um, and, you know, there are other issues with the Beyond Burger. Like, I think, like, it's great for people who, um, let's say, are accidental vegans. Um, so, you know, they're people who maybe have to go vegan or plant-based for health reasons, but they actually really like meat and burgers and stuff like that. Um, also good for your partners, you know, if, you're, if your partner um, isn't vegan, then, you know, but you want to cook vegan for, for you and them, then it's a really, really great, great product. Um, so Justine says that she loves them, <laughs> but she's no right babe. Um, and then one of the issues that I do have with the Beyond Burger is that at Christmas time, I made a, a mushroom wellington. And so any like burger patty like that is really great to use as a substitute for, for mince um, because they're really easy to um, mold, really, really easy to mold. Um, so they're not like other burger patties where they're kind of like quite firm um, and you know, you, you can kind of crumble them up, but that's about it. Whereas with a Beyond Meat Burger, you can actually just like mold it and shape it. So you can mold it and shape it into um, meatballs if you want to, um, which is really useful. That's a really, really useful thing for us as, as cooks and chefs, definitely. Um, but so I made this uh, mushroom, uh, uh, beef, no beef Wellington um, at Christmas time. So, you know, you wrap it in the pastry. It looks really, really beautiful. But the amount of oil that came out of it was really shocking, really shocking. Like the bottom of the pan was just filled with this oil that had seeped out of the burger. So that is like one issue that people have with them. You know, a lot of uh, people who um, are pro meat, that is one of the things that you would hear them say, that the Beyond Meat Burger isn't healthy. But to be honest, I don't think that was the point of it. I don't think that was the point of it. It's definitely for like those people who um, who really miss meat. So, you know, if that helps them, then that's absolutely fine. Um, I think that I heard recently that they're going to be opening up um, a manufacturing place in Europe, which will make them a lot cheaper because uh, they are very expensive. They are very, very expensive. Um, if anybody can get hold of them, um, V-Bites actually make a phenomenal burger. Um, it's not called the Phenomenal Burger, but it should be. That would be an amazing title, the Phenomenal Burger. It's quite a mouthful though, uh, especially for a sleepy Sunday. <laughs> Let's invent the Phenomenal Burger. Um, uh, but um, I was at a, a conference and, and Heather Mills, totally dropping a name in here, actually gave me a packet of these burgers because I don't think they're on sale in the UK at the moment, but they might be in the rest of Europe. But hopefully they might come over here um, eventually because they are, um, they're half the price of the Beyond Burger and you get four instead of two to a packet. So they're actually a quarter of the price, a quarter of the price. And I actually think they're nicer. I do. They don't have that like iron rich bloody smell to them, which actually for me isn't a bad thing. Um, so if you guys want to check out whether you can actually get them wherever you are, um, I think that's like a great option because it still has that meatiness, but it's not so intense. It's really like not so, not so intense. So that might be an option. Justine says, saying that I prefer the homemade burgers we make. Good, 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 because that's my recipe. <laughs> or Linda McCartney. Yeah, the Linda McCartney ones are really, really nice. Really, really nice. Um, okay, so uh, Paul is saying this is the Vegan Chef School's 97th Facebook daily news streaming since the 24th of March without a day being missed. High five. <laughs> uh, that's pretty impressive. That's pretty impressive. Yes, we, we have kept on going, uh, mainly because you guys give us the energy to keep on going. So over to today's recipe. It's another burger recipe. So I went through making lots of different types of burgers, like recipe developing them. And at every point I would say, this is the best burger that I've ever made. And so you'll find on our website, there's kind of like about three different burger recipes, all of them saying, this is the best burger I've ever made, because I just kept on, on improving. So this is a bean-based burger. The burger that we've made with you before um, was a mushroom-based one, but that said, you couldn't really taste the mushrooms. Um, but this is for, uh, you know, we've had a few people who've asked us for bean-based recipes, which can, be uh, really, really great, you know, nutrition-wise, uh, but also, you know, fairly cheap, fairly cheap to make. Although I must say that black beans should be uh, more available in the UK because it can be a bit hard to find. 
they can be a bit hard to find. But the reason why we're going to be using black beans is because they give a really, really good colour to our burger. Um, but if you can't find them, then you could swap them out with kidney beans because kidney beans are really easy to find in the UK. Uh, I don't know if uh, black beans might be easier to find in the US. If our, if our American people can tell me, that would be great. That would be great. Okay, so hello to James and hello to Joe. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for joining us. Okay, so Karen says your best burger is a million times nicer than the Beyond Burger. Thank you. Thank you. I'm going to just put that as a quote, a testimonial <laughs> somewhere. Uh, but that's, so the one that I showed you before was our best, best, best burger. Okay. And <laughs> this one is just our best, best burger. I think. I think. Anyway. Okay, right. So let's get over to our overhead cam and then we can see um, our ingredients for today. So we're actually going to do a bit of toasting as well. Um, so we've got the things that we will be toasting here. We've got our sesame seeds. Um, and I've got black sesame seeds today because it was all I had. Uh, but it doesn't matter whether you use black or white. Absolutely fine. Absolutely fine. Uh, Cor, Cor de Lion. What a name. What a name. That's amazing. Welcome, welcome. And Connie says, yeah, black beans at every supermarket. Yeah, because I think like you see them a lot in like American mm -hmm. cooking. Um, so yeah, more accessible um, over there. And then we have our cumin seeds. Um, and we have our um, our coriander seeds here. And Connie is obviously quick off the mark, and she says, "Yes, there's a burger man underneath our rainbow today." Uh, but what is our burger man doing? So you have to tell me, Colleen, what is our burger man doing? Because that is part of it as well. I think we've gone from um, you guys. <laughs> first of all, you guys guessing where the rainbow was in my kitchen, which which is just far too easy, far too easy, and uh, you far too good at that to what is underneath my rainbow uh, and then we've got onto what is underneath my rainbow and what action are they doing so we're just going to add like a little level of complexity um i think one time didn't we even have a banana doing an impression of the joker so we're going to have to just add this level of complexity otherwise it's just too easy you do you're too good you're too good basically uh and colleen of course was first off the mark and said dancing burger man yep Absolutely. Uh, Denise says, happy burger bean um, under the rainbow. Justine says, dancing burger. Yep, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I could I could make it really hard for you and ask you, like, what song is he dancing to? <laughs> that might be going a bit too far. That might be going a bit too far. Sarah, good morning, good morning. Um, welcome, welcome. Uh, we will, I'm going to give you an all three option as well, by the way. I forgot to mention that, but now that Sarah's um, joined us, that just jogged my memory because she's a no no oiler at the moment. Okay, and over to back to our ingredients. Um, so of course we've got our black beans, which we just um, chatted about. We've got our bouillon, our stock powder. So this is the one that I use, um, <laughs> and uh, it's by Marigold again. And of course, uh, yesterday we had our salad mist was using um, braised tofu, which is also from Marigold. So in the UK, this is quite a popular make of a variety of different vegan ingredients. Uh, and then we have our garlic and our red onion. If you guys want to add more garlic, then you absolutely can. Uh, I'm using a couple of red onions here today because uh, mine are quite small. And then we've got our ground flaxseed. Um, so this is already pre-ground. And then I've got my rice, but my rice was actually just cooking. So we've got brown rice today. Um, and just a word of warning, like if you are going to use brown rice, which is really, really lovely, really lovely, just make sure it is really, really fully cooked for this recipe. Because, you know, like brown rice can be a bit, um, it's not as kind of gloopy as uh, white rice, it's not as sticky, it, it, it's, uh, which is like one of the things that is really, really great about brown rice is that it, um, it's really nice, uh, it separates into grains very, very well very very well um so you know it has more texture to it it has a bit of bite to it as well um which is one of the reasons why i really really like it but in this recipe we want it to be one of the gluey things that's going to hold everything together okay so just make sure it is really really fully cooked so at the end of cooking there once the water had almost evaporated i just popped a lid on it 
um, and then took it off the heat. And that heat just keeps steaming it um, and make sure that it's fully cooked. Make sure that it's fully cooked. Um, so just do bear that in mind. So this is a good recipe for you guys if you have made too much rice, which I know is like quite a common thing to do. Um, so you know you can just uh, you can just use uh, leftovers. Um, and if you do ever make any uh, left, um, sorry, too much rice, then you can just pop it in the freezer um, and save it for another time because it is really useful in recipes like this. Okay, so back to our ingredients. Um, and uh, Justine says that uh, she only has white onions. That's absolutely fine. Absolutely fine. And Paul says, I think I missed why they're called Porto. Okay, we'll get on to, or it's actually because of our portobello mushrooms, um, uh, Paul. So but, uh, I'll have a chat with you about those in a second. Let's just get through the rest of our recipes. So we have a hand, half a handful of flat parsley, coriander and mint, or, you know, a very, you know, a, an amalgam of those, two of those. It's better to have two rather than just one because this is going to be quite a flavoursome burger. So we want to add lots of flavour from the herbs and also from the spices that we're going to be using. Uh, so I've got a couple of different types of mint from our garden. And I'm using black mint, which is really, really strong. I made a pea and mint soup yesterday and I only added a small amount. Um, and it was way enough. It was so much. And then I've got a bit of parsley and a bit of coriander. But I didn't, I couldn't take too much because, um, you know, the the... The plants weren't that big at the moment but I took as much as I could as much as I could because we want to impart loads of flavour in our burgers. Uh, Erin thank you for joining us today. Um, okay and then we have our yeast extract so this is the thing that is going to make it taste more meaty more savoury. Um, this is the brand that I use Meridian. Uh, you, can, you might also know this as Marmite or Vegemite um, if you can't get this, because I know that in the States it's actually really difficult to get yeast extract. Um, so a swap would be a dark miso. So, you know, like a black or a brown miso. Uh, Gloria um, asked a really good question. Doesn't cooked rice become a health risk fairly quickly, even if kept in the fridge? So, um, okay, so there is a certain type of bacteria that occurs in rice that is kept at room temperature. Um, so, oh gosh, uh, without getting into too many of the technical things, there is um, a certain temperature, which is kind of room temperature, which is known as the, the danger zone uh, in chef terms and with food safety. Um, and so that is the temperature at which this bacteria may grow. Um, and it is the type of bacteria that unfortunately you can't kill. So even if that bacteria occurred in rice, and then you fried it, for example, uh, you wouldn't be able to kill, you wouldn't be able to kill that bacteria. So the guidelines for professional kitchens is that you can't, uh, well, you should cool it down as quickly as possible. Um, so it kind of eliminates or reduces the amount of time that the rice is within that temperature zone, that, that danger zone. Um, and so we want to cool, if we're going to put it in the fridge, we want to cool it down really, really quickly and get it in the fridge as soon as possible. Um, and same as like, you know, when you're heating it up. So basically, if you can imagine, you know, in like professional like kitchens and stuff like that, you wouldn't want rice to be out on one of those like hot hold, you know, buffet things at all. Like because, um, you know, it could be that they're in the danger zone for a long time. We don't want it out on our counter when it's like a warm day um because that bacteria may start to grow so the guidelines is that we don't want to um recook rice more than twice maybe three times at a push and that's it so that's why uh rice can be um an issue and quite often you know people might have um you know food poisoning from a takeaway and usually it's because of the rice and because of the way that the rice has been has been managed that said okay I lived and worked in Malaysia for a while, and if anybody has travelled to um, Southeast Asia, quite a popular thing to do is to have these little rice pockets that are wrapped in banana leaves. And so in the middle of the rice pocket, you'll have, you know, some, um, usually meat, unfortunately, um, and spices and stuff like that right inside the, the rice. And then they'll be wrapped in the banana leaf, and they sit on the table for like the whole day. Like, well, okay, until somebody wants to eat one of them. And 
like that is just like completely in the danger zone, <laughs> completely in the danger zone. But it might be something that, you know, if people have been exposed to that type of bacteria from a young age, then they build up a resistance. So it may be something to do with that. But yes, you're absolutely right that with rice, we do need to be, we do need to be a bit careful. Uh, but as long as it isn't in that danger zone for too long, then the chance of it developing that certain type of bacteria is pretty, pretty low. Um, so um, yeah, yeah. So that's how we have to handle it. Uh, if you guys want to ask any questions about that, I know it's a bit complicated. Um, both Annie and uh, and Justine will be learning more about that because it is it is quite um, a an important topic for professional chefs. Definitely, definitely. Um, and Gloria says exactly what my vet said. Re takeaways. I run it under a cold tap in a sieve until it's completely cold. Yeah. So so the quicker that we can get it to cool down, if it's going to go into the fridge, then the better. Um, and so I just left mine um, steaming for about like ten minutes, and that that's going to be fine. That's going to be fine because it's actually like higher um then the danger zone okay so hello to lindsay linda and david um sarah says how do you cool it down quickly or do you put it in the fridge still a bit hot so um we don't put anything in the fridge that is hot um uh, mainly because we don't want the other things that are in the fridge around it to warm up because that could then affect them um so uh we, there are a few different ways that we can cool things down quickly my preferred method is um to use something quite wide so like a baking tray or something like that uh and give more surface area okay so if we can give anything more surface area then we will cool it down a lot quicker so say for example you know you're making a stew or, or just like a pot of rice that's a good example and that's what we're talking about i uh, get a really really wide baking tray uh take it out of the pan because the pan's going to be hot because that's what it's been cooked in and just give it loads of surface area leave it out on the side and it will cook down uh, sorry it will cool down really 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 quickly so that's my preferred method there are other methods as well like stirring stirring cools things down very uh, uh, quickly uh you can also um put things into a bowl and then put them into an ice bath that's also another method um uh, but as i said you know my uh preferred method um is this just giving it more surface area <clears throat> because i think that that is just easier it's easier because <clears throat> uh, all you need is like a baking tray or just you know a wide a wide plate platter something like that okay so um paul said i think marmite is made in burton on trent in the in midlands is it is it okay uh glorious antibiotics don't work on the bucket because no it's like it's like such a like super resistant thing it's a bit crazy okay so um as we are talking about rice i'm gonna get my rice out here and we only need about a cup of it uh, but i'm gonna get all of this out onto onto our plate so now that my rice is steamed enough i'll get it out onto the plate and just make sure that it's spread there we go and that's going to cool down really really quickly really quickly but i don't want you guys to get too paranoid about rice okay so um you know it isn't like that bacteria is definitely definitely going to occur um so you know we do have, we do have to be mindful of it but it isn't like it's definitely going to occur every time every time the the rice is in the danger zone it's just it's just more likely to happen it's more likely to happen so i'm just spreading this out there we go and we can leave that to cool down and i only need around half a cup for this recipe so uh yeah we'll get that when when we need it okay uh let's get back to our ingredients um sarah says is it the same with black and red rice to be honest babe i don't know why it would be any different i think it would probably be the same i think it'd probably be the same so just err on the side of caution um with that okay so um where did i get to so we've got our yeast extract we've got our salt uh oh yes i was talking about my herbs weren't i uh and i've got instead of portobello mushrooms i've got portobellini which basically is a fancy name for small portobello mushrooms okay um so i'm gonna make some mini burgers today to go with this um and then i have some paprika i've only got um regular paprika but you know with this recipe you can use hot smoked sweet smoked if you want to uh or just regular uh, paprika and then we've got a bit of water so if anyone's cooking along at home you do need to set your oven to 200 degrees celsius 
390 degrees Fahrenheit gas mark six. Um, oh, and sorry, I forgot to mention the tamari as well. We've got the tamari there. Okay, so um, let's get started. Um, oh, sorry, Colleen has just asked a question. Did you drain and rinse the black beans or straight from the can? Um, so yes, I took them out and I rinsed them and then I popped them back in the can because it's just it's easier for me uh, when I'm doing it this way. Um, so yeah, they are just drained and rinsed and then I just pop them back in there. There we go. Okay, so um, let's get started with this and we're first gonna start with toasting our sesame seeds, our cumin seeds and our coriander seeds. And that's something that I don't think that I've really done with you guys before. So I thought it was a good opportunity to do that. So we just want our pan on a low, low heat and then we can pop our seeds in. So um, we'll start with around like half a tablespoon of toasted sesame seeds. And we can actually just put these all, actually no, we'll do, our, we'll do our sesame seeds first and then we'll do these two together. So our sesame seeds will probably start popping and that tells us that uh, they are done. And then with these seeds, we need to be able to smell them. So they will become a lot more fragrant and that's what we're looking out for. And with these seeds, when we, um, when we toast them, we do want them to be well toasted because if they're not, then it's gonna be quite hard for us to grind them. It is gonna be hard for us to grind them, okay? So we'll pop those in in a second. We'll just wait for our toasted sesame seeds to start popping and then we'll put them out on a plate like this. And then they can just cool down whilst we're um, toasting those other seeds. So whilst that is happening, uh, we'll get on to the rest of the recipe. So it's really, really quite simple. Uh, Justine says, we only have fennel seeds. That would be a really nice addition, really nice addition. Um, so I think you could swap it out for that. Okay, so this is a really, really quite straightforward recipe. I'm gonna give you guys uh, two different options with um, either using um, a hand blender, my trusty hand blender, of course, or uh, or just using a potato masher. Um, so you can do either option today. Um, I'm going to use my hand blender because I've got one, but uh, I'll give you guys uh, guidance for just using um, a potato masher as well. Um, so I can see that these are smoking a bit. I don't know if you guys can see that actually. No, I don't think you can. You're just gonna have to take my word for it. Uh, okay, so we've got a nice big bowl here um, and we need to pop our beans into our bowl. And then our stock powder. There we go, where's my one teaspoon? There we go, one teaspoon stock powder and with an ingredient like this you guys can always add a bit more if you want to okay so these are starting to pop now so I'm just going to keep an eye on them and what if they do start going crazy then I'm going to take them out because they can just end up like all over your kitchen like literally like all over your kitchen um and then we need to just prep our garlic and red onion <clears throat> so these need to be uh, finely chopped. Yeah, both finely chopped. So if you want to, you could uh, pop these into uh, the chopper attachment of a blender. If you want to, um, just make it a bit easier for yourself. You can even grate them as well. They just need to be into small bits. Okay. Right, so I'm just going to take our sesame seeds out. There we go. Few remaining there. Let's get those out. I'm going to turn it down slightly. <clears throat> it's very, very hot. And then we'll add our uh, cumin seeds. So half, half a tablespoon of cumin seeds. There we go. Half a tablespoon of coriander seeds, so fairly easy to remember. And we just want those to start becoming fragrant, start smoking slightly, 
Um, and definitely brown, definitely brown. We definitely want the, them to brown because then they'll be easier to crush. Um, if you guys don't have the seeds at home, you could just use the ground seeds. So, you know, if you have ground cumin, if you have ground coriander, absolutely fine. You can just use that. Let me just see if we've got any questions that I've missed. There we go. Right, okay. No, you guys are all good. Good, good. So just bear in mind that your pan is already hot at this point. So our seeds may not take as long as our sesame seeds did to toast. And we don't want to burn them. Definitely don't want to burn them. It's really annoying when you burn um, seeds when you're toasting them. And I would very annoyingly, quite often, um, end up burning pine nuts. And pine nuts are so expensive in the UK. So expensive in the UK. Okay, so I'm just taking off these outer leaves that are quite thin. And also I've got this bit this onion so we'll just take that off let's give these a shake and so it's really good if you guys can be chopping right next to where you're toasting okay uh linda says would you still brown the powdered spices so if you want to get a bit more punch out of them then absolutely do so so you can just toast them for you know 30 seconds or something like that they don't need long at all so we just want to finely chop our red onion and it's just going to go straight into the bowl so we're not going to fry them beforehand we won't need to with these burgers there we go so these i can smell are just about done there we go. so we'll pop them into our kettle and mortar and let them cool down a bit first and then we'll brine them. There we go. We can get rid of that. And just crack on with our onions. So even though I am going to blend these, I am still finely chopping them because I just want to make sure that there are no big chunks of onion in my burger because I want it for flavour but I don't want those big chunks. Uh, just needs a deep at the black beans in the blender attachment. Um, no, I don't. So I'm just going to use a hand blender on this, um, Justine. So what I'm going to do, actually, I should tell you, is, is when I blend them, I, um, I'm just going to blend them a little bit. And the reason why is that I still want some of that chunkiness. Uh, I don't want it to be a puree. One of the things that I don't like about bean burgers is when it's just been completely pureed and it's just a bit, um, like there's no texture to it at all. I don't think that that's very pleasant when there's just no texture to it. Um, so we're gonna make sure that there is texture to this one. And <laughs> Paul is sharing details about Marmite, thank you. Thank you. And just to say, actually, yeast extract is a really, really great source of um, B12. Okay, so just finely chopping our garlic as much as possible. If you're struggling with chopping your garlic at finer, then you can just sprinkle a bit of salt onto it. And then that means that, uh, it's just easier for your knife to chop it. It isn't so sticky. Okay. Uh, so uh, now we need our ground flax seeds. So two tablespoons of our ground flax. Justine said, "Oops, what's that about?" <laughs> oh, did you did you blend yours? Okay, okay. Well, don't worry too much. 
don't worry too much if you have already blended your black beans um because we're going to be adding the rice so the rice can can add texture for you justine okay so now our ground flaxseed so two tablespoons of ground flaxseed and that's going to help hold everything together as well as giving us some great nutrition in there too that's our ground flax um, and then we have uh, next our cooked rice so I'll go and grab that in a second uh, there we go okay um, and Justine I hope that you're getting on okay do let me know in the comments how you're doing um, okay so we've got our um, our beans, our stock powder, our garlic, our red onion, our flax. Now we need our rice, so it's around half a cup. So I'll just guesstimate that because I can kind of do that by eye these days. So look how much rice I cooked. Definitely, I'm going to have to come up with something to make with that later on today. There we go. So we've got our rice in there. And then we need our toasted sesame seeds. So we've got our toasted black sesame seeds today rather than white. And then we need our spices. So we'll just give them a good grind. There we go, pop those in there, get rid of that. Uh, and then we have our herbs, so just grab our herbs over here and I'm just gonna tear them in because I actually like big bits of herb. If you guys wanna finely chop them, then you can do. And I've got the stalks in here as well, which I actually like. I'm just making sure with the stalks that they aren't, they aren't too long, they aren't too big. There we go. There we go. And you guys can add more herbs as well if you want to. Okay, and then we've got our yeast extract. Um, so we need just half half a tablespoon of yeast extract. So this is, you know, it's quite salty. So just be careful with how much you're adding. Scoop that out with a teaspoon. <laughs> there we go finally in there for now. Um, and so then we just need a little bit of salt and so one of the differences actually between this uh, burger recipe and the other burger recipe that we shared is that this one it's easier for you to taste it and see if you want to make any adjustments with the other burger recipe we use gram flour with it which has a really disgusting overpowering flavor when it's raw so you can't really do that. Um, okay, and now we can use a hand blender um, just to process it. And you can you, you can either make it completely smooth, uh, keep it quite chunky, or somewhere in between. So I'm going to do somewhere in between today. said I want to do it kind of somewhere in between okay so we've still got some little bits of rice there some little bits of onion um, but we have enough of it blended that it is going to hold together so if you guys are using um, a potato masher then just focus on really mashing those beans because that is what you're going to be able to mash and that is what will help uh, stick everything together. So I'm mixing this in really really well because I just want to make sure that that yeast extract is fully incorporated because we don't want a big chunk of that. That wouldn't be very nice for, for someone to, to eat. Okay so now we can make the patties. So 
And you can do it two ways. You can either mold them with your hands, which is obviously, you know, the messier way, or you can roll it between two sheets of baking paper and cut the shapes out with like a, co a cookie cutter or something like that, a glass, a cup or whatever, whatever it is that you want to do. So uh, let me grab my baking tray. If you guys are oil free, then you can use some baking paper um, or, you know, reusable baking paper, something like that. Um, I am going to add a little bit of oil to mine today um, and try to uh, get them to brown a bit on the outside by doing this. But you guys don't have to. So, you know, this can be an oil free recipe um, if you want it to be. So I've just uh, added a little bit of water to my hands, not a huge amount, but just a little. And that's going to help me to make our patties. So as I said today, I'm going to be making some small small patties so just rolling them into small burger shapes and just make sure that this oil is even so i just want a really thin layer of oil over our baking tray right there we go and once again just rolling them and then flattening them Slightly. there we go so and if you guys want to make sure that these are the right all the same size because I know that that can be a little bit annoying sometimes um, that they all come out different sizes you can use weighing scales and just weigh them out so that's like one trick um, that we do in in pro kitchens is you just you know have a little bowl on a on some weighing scales and just add a little bit of the mixture until you get the same amount time after time. There we go. And see that one? It's a bit smaller. It's really, it's really difficult to, to make them exactly the same size every single time. Okay. So there we go. I'm just going to do four for now, just so that I can get going with the rest of the recipe for you. Before I put them in the oven, I'm just going to turn them over. So that there has been some oil on the top and there is also now some oil on the bottom. And that just helps steer them, basically. So, you know, it'll, it'll help with the colour. Just going to go and wash my hands. As I said, it does get a bit a bit mucky when we do it this way. Okay. Um, and they'll need maybe 30 minutes in the oven. But because they're so small, and I've just turned the heat up, we might get away with um, less time than that and hopefully we'll be able to see them before the end of the show. And I have also just popped them at the, in the, on the top shelf. Yeah, I was, I've just popped them on the top shelf because I really like you guys to see them before you go off and make burgers, so. <laughs> right, okay, so on to the next part of our recipe which is making our mushrooms. So the mushrooms are gonna go into the oven as well. Uh, we need another nice big bowl. Um, I am quite keen on using big bowls because quite often like, I see people using like tiny bowls and really struggling to move things around in a small bowl. Um, so I am quite keen on a big bowl. Uh, let me just see, I think I've probably missed loads of questions. Uh, let me just see, okay. Uh... <laughs> okay, so just seeing right, they aren't totally blended. Okay, that's good, that's good. Um, and just needs half a cup of rice, mm, it's still cooking. Okay, well, you're just gonna have to wait. You're gonna have to wait. So, um, if in uh, the ingredients list we say something like uh, cooked rice, then it's really great if you guys can do that beforehand. Um, so, you know, the idea of this recipe is that you already have that to hand, you already have that to hand. Um, so just for, you know, the future cook-alongs that we'll be doing. Uh, Colleen says, thanks for posting this. Oh, I just realized that Marmite is not gluten-free. Um, yeah, there are, I think this one is, though, I think this one is, so you can find, you can find gluten-free options. Um, and uh, Denise says, I bet the aroma of the spices and herbs is amazing. Yes, absolutely. absolutely. I think I heard tons of herbs are more flavorful. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And also, one of the things that we kind of forget is that both herbs and spices have amazing, um, amazing health properties. All of, all of the herbs have such amazing health properties. So parsley, it's really good for uh, cleansing your kidneys, you know, so, so they have, they, they can really help us. Um, and there are countries in the world that, you know, they, when they have like a bunch of herbs, 
it isn't like our like tiny little packet of herbs uh, that you get from the supermarket. Like they're massive bunches, massive bunches. Um, so you know, if you can, if you can get hold of them, you know, and implement them more into your diet, then I definitely, definitely recommend it. One of my favourite salads is basically just a load of herbs, like a massive amount of herbs and a bit of rocket. It's amazing, really, really good, really good. Uh, Justine said Joss got the ingredients out, so you can tell her off. I wasn't telling anyone off. It was just for future reference. Okay, so now onto our onto our mushrooms. So basically, we're going to be taking our mushrooms, imparting some flavour in them, um, just in the same way that we would do with tofu. Uh, very, very, you know, it's, but it's the same. It's the same marinade that I use for tofu quite often. It's the tamari, the water, the paprika. Okay. Here we go. So right with our portobello mushrooms, yours are probably bigger than mine because mine are little tiny baby, baby ones. Uh, we just want to carefully take the stem out. Okay, so I wiggle it around really gently until it prizes off. Because the thing is like with mushrooms is that they can, they can split apart very easily and you don't want that to happen. Uh, if you guys want your uh, mushrooms to be a bit prettier, you can just peel this off if you want to. Rose, thank you for joining us. Thank you for joining us. Uh, Erin says, what's rocket? So rocket is also known as arugula, which is one of the funnest words to say. Arugula, arugula. Everyone say it with me. Come on, arugula. Arug How fun is that? They have a much better word. Or rocket in America. I mean, rocket is like a pretty cool word anyway, but arugula, I could to totally get on board with that. <laughs> in fact, maybe I should just change my name to arugula. Anyway, right, so as I said, with our mushrooms, just carefully taking that stem out and just being patient with it. But if you want yours to be a bit prettier, then you can take off um, the uh, skin. Arugula, yeah, Erin. Erin says, oh, yeah, yeah, I think you know it as arugula. So I'm just pinching, if you guys can see that, I'm pinching that bottom of the stem and just carefully lifting it out. There we go. And just bear in mind as well that these will probably shrink a bit in the oven. Here we go. I don't know what Doug's talking about. At one point, the link disappeared, just as you said. I like big. I laughed on the train as I couldn't get the image. <laughs> You're like, I like big butts. Yeah, I don't think I should sing that on the show. I think I might offend some people if I do that. And also, I don't really know the words. But, you know, if you want me to do that, I'll learn them for you guys. Okay, so again, just pinching at the base, the base of a stem. There we go. And I am being really careful. Really careful, really gentle with our mushrooms. They're very delicate things. There we go. And these stems you can you can save and you can use. So they'd be really great in stock. We would make like an umami packed stock if we used if we use these. So don't throw them away. Okay, and now we just want to make our marinade. Um, so that is two tablespoons of our tamari, two tablespoons of our water, and one teaspoon of hot paprika, or I, I've just got regular paprika today. Um, so I'll just get my tablespoon. So I'm just going to pop it down the side there. One. So the reason why we add water as well is because it can just be a bit too strong without it. But you know, sometimes our tamari or our soy sauce has already been watered down, so do kind of bear that in mind. Do bear that in mind. There was one that I had before, which I think is Kicker Man. Is it Kicker Man? <laughs> that thing. Uh, that make. Um, so, uh, yeah, do, do be aware that there are there are some brands that are very, very watery. Very, very watery. So, not all tamari or soy sauce is, is equal. So, one teaspoon. Of our paprika, and I'm just going to pop that down the sides there, and I can just give that a little shake. And there we go, we can keep on shaking it and shaking it. Get our hands involved, turn them over, make sure that they are really covered. 
There we go. Oh, Erin said, yes, it's Kicker Man. Yeah. See, I said that, and then as I was saying it, it was like, that doesn't sound right, because that doesn't sound like a brand. That sounds like, I don't know, the end of a joke. <laughs> okay, so just making sure that these are um, really covered. And just for you guys who are into raw food, you can actually um, just soak um, uh, portobello mushrooms in this marinade uh for overnight no for 24 hours and then they get soft enough to eat raw and so you know i've done that before and it's really really lovely so you know if you guys don't want to bake them then then that is an option as well uh, because i mean they're just great sponges mushrooms are great sponges that that's like one of the um great things that they do is just soak up this marinade um which is which is great which is really really lovely okay so now let's see how our burgers are doing. Just put this out on the counter. There we go. Yeah. There we go. My eyes are a bit stingy because um the oil has been doing its thing. Okay, so they are browning nicely. Okay. There we go. Just move them over so you guys can see them there. I'm just going to flip them over. So yeah, these ones don't take too long at all. They might take, you know, about half an hour to get like really solid because they are a bit soft. These are still a bit soft and we do want them to cook out a bit and just have a bit more, um, you know, a bit more of a firmer texture. And now we can just pop some of these onto onto the baking tray and then they can cook for another say like 10 minutes probably there we go and do save this marinade because if the um if the mushrooms start drying out then you can just add spoons of this marinade um to to the mushrooms so don't throw this away so we'll just pop these back into the oven, top shelf again, but that's because I'm in a bit of a hurry today because I've got, I've got you guys here, so of course I want to speed things up a bit, uh, but for anybody who's not in a hurry, then you can cook them for uh, your burgers for around like 20 minutes to half an hour, it does depend how big they are, so if they are quite big, then maybe like the full half an hour, but you do want to make sure that they are like a bit firmer, uh, because one of the annoying things about uh, veggie vegan burgers is the ones that are just a bit too squidgy um, and they don't hold together. Okay, David said that he's just got here. Can I please start over? <laughs> well, um, I think I might bore everyone else <laughs> if I do that, David. So sorry, sorry, sorry. Uh, but you can always watch it on, on catch up. And in fact, I think you can even rewind it whilst I'm on live. There you go. Um, and uh, yes, Paul, Paul has just mentioned about arugula. Um, and it's really interesting actually, like seeing like the, the different variations of the word that it goes, that it went from arugula to rucula to rocket, which I, I, I'm such a food geek. I find things like that really, really interesting. Uh, but it's very, very uh, uh, lovely, very lovely. Uh, and in fact, um, nasturtium has a very similar, similar flavour, somewhere between rocket and watercress nasturtium. I'm totally uh, grief stricken because I just lost my last nasturtium plant out of four. The aphids just totally decimated it. So, but hopefully I can uh, make some, make some more, grow some more. Okay. Uh, Sarah says, could we use any rice for this? Thank you, they look lovely. Um, yeah. Yeah, I think so. I think I yeah, I think that you probably can. So the rice is there to partly um, hold things together, uh, but also to add um, a bit of texture, a bit of texture, because if we just had the beans on their own and blended them, then it would just be like this homogenous mass. There wouldn't be any texture to it. And I always want a bit of texture in my burgers. I don't want it to be, um, you know, that kind of like soft stuff at all um so that's <laughs> that's uh that's what the function is so i think really kind of like most rice would be able to do that um 
And uh, Gloria says that she can give me lots of nasturtiums. <gasps> that would be amazing. That would be, oh, I absolutely love nasturtiums. Um, and uh, we've got a conversation going on about Barack Obama. Of course we have. Of course we have. Which is weird, because I actually uh, Googled something about him this morning. So I think, you know, us, us guys, like, we're just, like, totally in sync with each other in a freaky way, in a very freaky way. Uh, Justine says, how often am I meant to feed the SCOBY? I don't want to kill it. Okay, so Justine just recently received a SCOBY from me, and so that's a kombucha SCOBY. Um, and so, uh, Justine, uh, let's have a conversation off air about that because we might bore someone, and I just wanna make sure that you know exactly what to do. So DM me, and then we'll have a chat later on today about your SCOBY. Um, and uh, Gloria says, I used to eat lots of watercress as I grew up in Chess Valley. <gasps> oh, I love watercress. Watercress soup is just divine. Really divine, so so lovely. Okay, there was something I was going to tell you guys about this, but I've totally forgotten what it is. I'm sure it was important, it will come back to me. Um, no, it's gone, it's gone. If it comes, <laughs> if it comes back into my head, I'll let you know. We'll just wait a few more moments and see how our burgers do. Oh, that was it. I remembered what it was now. Okay, so if you guys want to um, have a top down shot. Uh, when you're taking a photograph of your burger, it can be a little bit tricky to do. It can be a little bit tricky to do. Because this, um, you know, cut, uh, cut into angle is lovely. Okay, so see in the picture here, you know, I've cut the burger in half and I put it on its side, uh, surrounded it with some green, which is also a really good tip uh, for you guys who, who like taking um, nice food, uh, food photos. Um, but of course, if we put our burger on the side like this, what is going to happen is it's going to fall apart, isn't it? So, in this picture, I actually use toothpicks. So that that is that is it. That is <laughs> that is the trick. Uh, do use some toothpicks, and then you'll be able to hold them together. So not only for uh, food photography, but just for presentation sake. You know, if you want to present them uh, like I have here, obviously it looks very pretty. Uh, you can see the tomato in it. Uh, you can see uh, the burger, you can see that nice uh, cut of, of the, the portobello or portobellini mushroom as well. Um, so I just stuck um, a couple of toothpicks in it, but just beware, you know, just make, make sure that the person who's eating it know, knows that there's going to be toothpicks in it. So that's just a tip uh, for you guys there. So let me just go over to the oven and see how, how our mushrooms and our burgers are doing, see if they're anywhere near ready. Woof. There we go. Okay, so they're looking pretty good. Pretty good. Let me bring you guys to the overhead cam. There we go, so we can see. So obviously with these mushrooms, you know, they do, they do shrink a bit, so do bear that in mind. There we go. But we don't have to cook them very much at all. And so I, I test them by putting my spatula into the center, seeing how they're doing. There we go, very good. Very good, very good, very happy with this. Very happy with this. In fact, I can probably load one up now. I think these burgers are a little bit uh, soft, but for you guys, I am going to, uh, one out on the plate right there we go um just trying to match up the size there we go oh this is cute this is very very cute but denise i'm not sure i can try one of these because it looks really hot i know that you're going to request that ah there we go there we go how cute is that how cute is that okay Right, this is like the tiniest burger in the world. Look at that. I'm gonna have to hold it to the side for you as well. There we go. There we go. So actually, I am after the show. I'm gonna load that up with some ketchup and mustard and a big fat gherkin <laughs> sticking out of it because I think that that would look really, really fun. And you can see the steam coming off that. So you're gonna have to excuse me that I don't. I don't just gobble that up right here and now uh 
Because I think I might burn my mouth again. Okay, so let me see if you guys have any more questions. Uh, oh, Lisa, Lisa Chow takes amazing food. Oh, oh, I'll have to check that out afterwards. Um, Karen says, I feel your pain about losing plants. The wildlife business is in my garden. have eaten all my strawberries. Oh no. Oh, it's such a shame. Um, Gloria says, under your influence, I started buying more organic and Oh, good for you. Good for you. That's great. That's great. Um, and Justine says, that she's ordered from Redford. That's really wonderful, really wonderful. And David said, just figured out the mushroom bun thing. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So um, this is, you know, our, our you know, our, our mushroom is our bun, uh, rather than our disappointing veggie vegan burgers, which quite often has been uh, a bread bun with a portobello mushroom in it, which to me, to my mind, is not a burger. It's not a burger, is it? It's like when you get, a, a chickpea burger, and really, it's just a falafel in a burger bun. That's not a burger. <laughs> we demand good vegan burgers. Okay, uh, Denise says, what a sweet little burger. It is, it is, it is. Uh, exactly. So thank you guys um, for joining me. And just because uh, you guys mentioned about organic ingredients and buying from River Food, um, once I have um, finished uh, filming the Pro Chef course, which I'm in the middle of doing at the moment, my next project is uh, organic on a budget. So um, I want to set myself um, a certain amount of money that we are allowed to spend on our food uh, for the month um, and stick to that budget, but with the goal of 90% of, um, of the ingredients being uh, organic. Um, and, you know, because I think that that is like such a big factor for people quite often like they they like in principle the idea of going organic and they can see why it would be a good thing uh but it can seem expensive so what i would really like to do with that is put together a meal plan based on uh you know that budget and so it just gives gives you guys out there who want to incorporate more organic into their into their lives do it without feeling like they have to spend loads of money um so that's the next project that's the next project uh, Paul said, where do uh, you get your mushroom from? Uh, so these ones are actually from Ocado, uh, but I also get them from Riverford as well. We've had we've had quite a few mushrooms in our Riverford uh, box recently. We've also had a lot of carrots, like a lot, and I'm a bit carroted at the moment, <laughs> after a bit, after a bit. Okay, so uh, David and Justine and Linda all like that idea. So yeah, that is gonna be um, the next project uh, coming up. So thank you guys for uh, joining me for this recipe. Uh, 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 join us tomorrow where I'm gonna be making a really, really simple cauliflower dal. Uh, very good way to, again, get spices into your diet. But it's a really super easy recipe, really super easy recipe. So um, do join me for that. And as always, have a lovely day.